y'all have survived. How are your brains doing? Mine's on like overload. It's been a lot to take in. Anybody find good nuggets that are going to change the way you do business or the way you build websites? Yeah? Has it been worth it? Yes. Phenomenal. Way to go. Be sure to hug a volunteer on the way out today. My name is Corey Ash, and I'm from San Antonio, Texas. And, oh, holla. Way to go. And I will say y'all way too much. Don't judge me. It'll be good, though. Um, I want to start off by asking kind of what is our level of understanding uh, in the room? So, how many of y'all, see there's the first y'all, there you go. How many of y'all can basically take my place right now and feel confident enough to come up here and teach this workshop because you've done SEO for whatever amount of time? You feel that confident? Show of hands, no judgment, right? If you feel confident to do it, I just, yeah, okay, a few. I'm gonna ask you to leave. <laughs> Don't judge me. Okay, how many of y'all feel like you're pretty good at SEO, but you're here to just grab those few extra nuggets because your website's not ranking as well as you'd like it to be? Okay. How many of you have just now today figured out how to spell SEO? <laughs> the rest of us. Very good. All right. Well, awesome. So I hope that you're going to be able to take away a couple of extra nuggets today from this workshop. I'm going to give you some examples of specific things you can do on your website to help it uh, improve the rankings on Google. Um, and I'm also going to give some of you who are a little bit more advanced maybe some ideas that you haven't thought of just yet, so stick around. And at the very end, I'm going to give you my slides. I'm going to give you some really cool resources that maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't figured out how to use them exactly. Okay? And I'm also going to give you a worksheet that you can download and use as a checklist to go through every single one of your websites and kind of check off the things that you need to absolutely be sure to have in place, okay? So the last thing I want you to do is come sit in another workshop and learn about something and not learn how to do something. All right, so we want to really make this more of a hands-on. I'm not only taking notes, but these are actionable items that you can go home today and implement and make a difference. Um, I have a lot of feedback from the different classes that I give around the states. They tell me, oh, I know all about that. I know all about how to do it, I just never do it. So shame on you. Just go do it. Just try to take one thing even. It might seem really overwhelming because, you know, I'm going to give you a list of like 10 or more things that you can go do, but at the same time, even if you just did one, you're going to be in a better scenario than you are today. Does that make sense? And I will do my best to hurry through this. I do speak a little quickly, but again, uh, you'll have slides at the end of the day. I feel sorry for, for our guy over here, my dad. I do speak very quickly. I'll try to slow down for you. Um, but let's get started. So why in the world do we even care uh, about Google? Why do we care about Google? Why, why is it really what we focus on uh, more so than Bing or Yahoo or all the others out there? There's 60,000 plus queries happening on Google every second. That equates to 3.5 billion searches per day. That equates to 1.2 trillion. That's nuts. Like, I just want a sliver of that traffic. That's all I'm asking for, right? So if we can grab a hold of that and figure that out, that's what this workshop is about. How to get your website on that page one organically. So that's what I'm really going to be focusing on today. So there are paid options to get on Google, right? Everybody knows about those. And then there's ways to build your website correctly and add the right content in your website to help you improve those search results. Does that make sense? Brilliant. Just a side note, do you ever wonder where uh, Google got its color palette from, its branding colors? Y'all remember this game? I'm going to age myself a little bit here, right? Y'all remember that? Simon Says, yeah? But what, look at the logo on Google. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure this is really what that should look like. That should have Google. Because whatever Google says we should do, we should probably do it, right? I'm pretty convinced of that. So I had a, a potential client, ended up not being a client because it ended up to be one of those wackadoos. Um, had a potential client come to me and say, Corey, I need you to build me a website. <coughs> and um, so we started in the process of kind of walking down the discovery phase of what all he needed. And ultimately I asked, okay, are you using this to get on Google? Do we need to be seen on Google or are you using this just to be legitimate? Because I really wasn't understanding his strategy. And he just stopped me in my tracks. 
I don't care anything about Google. Google hates me, so I hate Google. <laughs> and that was it. He was done talking with me about Google. Wait, he didn't need to be found, didn't care to please it at all, didn't care. Uh, so that's certainly where I got the title of this, uh, this workshop is, we really want Google to love us. So in any working relationship, you have to work at it. Uh, where he failed was Google didn't rank him maybe in the first uh, six months or 12 months of his website, so he just, never mind then, and I'm never going to do anything to try to please Google. What I want to, you to wrap your brain around today is there are certain things in any relationship that we have to give and take, give and take. Google wants that same thing from us. They need us to give them something that wows them, that impresses them, that basically says to them, hey, I'm of value, I want a relationship with you, and they're going to start to rank you. Does that make sense? Yeah? So if we have a really lame website, why do they care? If our service page has 30 words on it, or maybe you just have a bullet point list of the different things that you do, and that's that, there's no substance there for Google to even care about. So we're going to get into a couple of things, that, and I'm going to try to break it out in kind of two super categories of how we can have Google fall in love with us. And then I'll give you some extra little details underneath there. And again, I'll give you a worksheet at the end of this so you can all go be rock stars with your website. All right, so the first thing I want you to understand is Google will love you if it understands you. Any relationship, you've got to have those understanding moments. You've got to have those connections. So Google will love you if it clearly understands you. And Google will also love you if users love you. So how do we get those to take place? I want to walk you through. I'm going to cut out. Let's see if I can totally break this. I'm going to cut out of a PowerPoint for a second. I'm going to take you over to a live website right now, um, and I'm going to show you how Google reads websites. I think you need to wrap your brains around this on a couple of different levels, and I'm going to grab my pointer here. <coughs> Let's see if this works. Yeah. Um, I want you to wrap your brain around this because a lot of SEO people will hide this from you. If you're hiring an SEO company to do this, it's kind of our, well, we'll do magical things for you and you don't need to know about it. Don't bother knowing about it. There are some serious things that you need to know about. And you might have heard, hey, fix your page titles. Hey, uh, you know, do your header tags. Hey, throw out your description. But you don't know how they affect your page. So I'm going to walk you through just a really quick understanding of how Google sees your website, reads your website, and then we're going to go from there on actually how to change these things and help your website rank better. This is the company I work with. I'm one of the founders of it. Um, holler also for all the ladies in here. Way to go, women in technology. I'm so impressed with how many females we've seen at WordCamp Boston. So way to go. And gentlemen, that speaks to you as well for giving us a seat at the table and not being uh, standoffish. So thank you for that environment. It's very cool and inclusive. Way to go. Um, so this is Webtegrity. We are a WordPress only digital firm in San Antonio, Texas. And so I want to show you how I'm outranking my competition. The one guy who hollered that you're from, Te are you from Texas? Yep. Are you from San Antonio? Houston. Are you a competitor of mine? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's all good. I'm going to show you my secret sauce. So here we go. Um, what is the first thing you think Google reads when they see this website? The H1. Come on. The, okay, the H1. What else? The title. The, ti the title tag. Where does that appear? In the tab. In the tab? At the very top up here? You are exactly right. That's the first thing it reads. So we read visibly our users probably read all this, right? But Google starts the entire conversation trying to understand us by going all the way to the top of our website and looking at this little title tag right up there. Inside of Yoast, that's your title tag. If you're familiar at all with Yoast, right, the most uh, used, have to be careful there because there might be some all-in-one SEO people here. Uh, uh, Yoast is a great SEO plugin that you can use. Even the free version is phenomenal. So it helps you edit this uh, top title tag. That title tag is the largest font inside of your Google snippet whenever 
people see you on Google, right? It's that largest font that gets people to hopefully click on your listing instead of somebody else's. You must address these. So this starts the conversation inside of, of Google. So they're looking here now. What's the next thing they look at? Shout it out. H1. 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 Okay, what else? Alt tags, I heard. What else? URL. URL. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to work our way from the top to the bottom, right? So you're exactly right. Our title tag is there. The next thing they're going to read is the URL. Do you remember in the matrix, do you remember all the numbers falling down the screen and all of a sudden they started like highlighting down the screen? Google, as much as it wants to be human, Google is still a robot. So it has to have logic take place by seeing a pattern. That's why you hear about keyword stuffing, right? Because they think if we put it in there enough times, Google will clearly understand what it is that we do. Those of you who don't know what keyword stuffing is, I'll give you a quick example. Let's say that you run a, comp uh, you run a, um, a blue jean company and you want people to buy your skinny jeans and your paragraph on your skinny jean page reads like this. If you're looking for skinny jeans, be sure to visit our skinny jean department because we have skinny jeans for uh, females, skinny jeans for males, skinny jeans for uh, teenagers, and skinny jeans for kids. Be sure to reference one of our skinny jeans consultants to help you find the best fitting skinny jeans. <laughs> what do you think that's about? Skinny jeans, obviously, skinny jeans, right? But that is completely keyword stuffing. So that is the type of pattern, though, uh, in a sense that we used to do black hat stuff, right, unfortunately. And, and Google's gotten more intelligent now and says, okay, you're trying to game the system, cut that out. However, it still needs some sort of a consistent pattern down the page to clearly understand what it is that you're offering. So that's the first thing we're reading. Second thing, what's next? Keep going with me, come on. What's next that it reads? H1. All right, so where's my H1 on this page? We build remarkable WordPress websites. We would think that that would be correct, right? That we build remarkable WordPress websites. That would be our H1 logically. Typically the largest font size, right, on the page is our H1. Uh, it does happen to be our H1. Uh, but Google's going to read something higher than that. Literally working down the page, can Google read my logo? Yes. We have all all tags. Okay. What else can it read about that logo? File name. File name. Absolutely. So if, go home today. Here's one nugget for you right now. If you right mouse click and say view your image, if your logo is named logo.png or logo.jpg, you have missed an opportunity to either list your keyword or to at least minimally make it your name. Webtegrity.com or webtegrity underscore logo.com, right? Does that make sense? First nugget. It's a simple thing, but I'm going to show you why those simple things start to add up. So it does read Webtegrity. Can it actually see that picture? No. Oops. <laughs> as smart as Google is getting, that's why whenever you do a, a, a search for a cat picture, and the file name is named like 12379Q, but it's still a cat, it has facial recognition. So it's starting to be more and more intelligent, but certainly our alt tags help it along, right? Makes sense. All right, so uh, checking out these little guys over here, these are my links on the page. Can it read those? Does the order matter? Do the title tags behind the links matter? Yes. Check this out, secret sauce time. Here we go. So home, to the user is home, to Google it's WordPress San Antonio because that's my title tag behind my menu item. Service to the user is service, to Google it's web design in San Antonio. Are your minds blown yet? <laughs> Let's keep going. Wow. Okay. Support is not just support, it is WordPress support. I threw in my keyword. Score. About our team, we're a bunch of nerds, WordPress developers in San Antonio. So there's a title tag field in your appearance menus. When you open up, you know the menu area, when you click on the little arrow and open up that little drawer, if it does not live there, take note of this, up in the top right hand corner is a section called screen options. Open up that little drawer. Magic all sorts of different fields in there. Check on the box that says title. That'll open up a whole new world for you.
for you to legally put, do not keyword stuff. Do not abuse this. It's just simply a title in there. So resources, again, is not just resources, it's WordPress resources. And I'm trying to be, bring clarity and repetition to Google in a very logical way. So as it scrolls down my page now, they start to see a pattern. And now I'm speaking to my users. As you talk about conversion strategy, Tom Shapiro gave a really great talk a, a few sessions back now on conversion. You want to speak to their points of pain. So when we're scrolling down the page now, our call to action is let's fix your website because I understand my demographic. I don't want people trying to build brand new websites. They have no budgets. <laughs> I want people who have really crummy, crummy old websites that are not mobile friendly that they can't even log into because their webmaster went on like sabbatical for forever because they're tired of answering their phone calls. Um, those are the type of clients I want. So let's fix your website. And then you're going to start to see again a pattern of WordPress, WordPress mixed down the page. Your images, they have the ability to have alt tags behind them. So this right here says our web design services. SEO is our web design services. We've got, if you hover over your text links, this is how Google starts to see a pattern down your page. Is this old school knowledge for you guys, or is this something new? Yeah. Little new? Yeah. Keep scrolling down the page. Do you have anything on your website that's fresh content on your home page? One of the things that I do consistently, and I would challenge you to subscribe if you're interested in stuff like this, or if you like my chat, I have a YouTube channel where every single Wednesday I produce a YouTube video. I call it WordPress Wednesday. Because <laughs> I absolutely suck at writing a blog. But somebody challenged me and told me, okay, my major was English. I, I love the idea of writing, but I get completely boring. And I'm like, my, my opening statement, I have to capture their attention. My three points, I have to wrap it all up with the call to action. It just gets really boring. So somebody challenged me and said, you know what, you're a little animated. Maybe you should get on video. So my first few videos were horribly boring, and I've left them on YouTube. If you do a little research, they're quite embarrassing. It's me something like this. Hi. Welcome to another WordPress Wednesday. It's horrible. It, it's deer in the headlights. I look ridiculous. But I've been trying it now for two years, and I've gotten a little bit more consistent. We've grown it to over 21,000 subscribers as of today. We've monetized our channel. We're making about two grand a month. That's actually how I get to my WordCamps. It's kind of cool because somebody gave me the feedback and said, you know, your writing's really boring. So take, take that feedback. But so this is my fresh content. Every Wednesday, I'm creating some fresh content here with our vlog, our video blog. And then, of course, we have our calls to action, which uh, is extremely rare to do three at the same type of level. But that's what we've been doing, and we've been trying to do a little bit of A-B <coughs> testing on all this. All right, does this make sense? So that's how Google sees your website. So here we go now. We're going to go back to the presentation now. Let's see if I can find it without breaking anything. Slideshow. Okay, from current slide, maybe. It's like I planned this. There you go. All right. So here's the first thing in that relationship. Google has to understand you. So we've been told by everybody else who's ever taught an SEO workshop to go do this. Optimize your content and tags using the correct search phrases and keywords. What does that mean? What does optimize mean? What does that mean? Maybe this is why uh, we, we don't go home and do anything. We've sat through another SEO session and they've said the same thing over and over and over again. I still do not understand what to go do in my website. I have no idea what I'm taking home and able to implement today. Well, the very first thing I have to challenge you to do, and I want you to show me your hands, how many of you know today without a shadow of a doubt you fully understand what your top 10 keywords are that you're trying to rank for? Heart crushing, there's not one hand up in this room, y'all sitting in the front. There's not one hand up. So that's mistake number one, and we've got to go remedy that. You have to go understand what your keywords are because if you go in just now trying to go optimize, whatever that word means, your, your website, you're going to fail because you will be guessing. So what I want you to do is before you go after your keywords, you have to understand your audience. So let's go see this. You have to understand who your audience is. You have to understand how they search, and you have to understand what they search for. So again, we've heard it throughout this whole uh, um, weekend. If we're, if we're looking at how to 
uh, find have better conversion, we want to go find our demographic, right? We need to know what age range is searching for us. We need to know what they like, what they don't like. We need to understand what their words are, uh, not just our own. And I'm going to give you an example of that. Let's try this. And, and what they search for. Hold on. I'm not as prepared as I should be. Okay. All right, I'm going to walk away from the mic for just a second, but I won't talk once I'm out there. we will be good. All right. I've got something in my hand. Every single person in this room should know what this is. Please do not ruin this moment. Do not say it out loud until I count to three. And then I want all of us to just say out loud what you believe this to be in my hand. Every one of you should have some word for it. And I'll walk. Here we go. Here we go. Don't say it. Everybody see it in the back? You all see what this is? Everybody? Everybody got it in your heads? Here we go. One more time. We're good? I'm talking. My bad. <laughs> On the count of three. One, two, three. Flash drive. Are y'all from Boston or what? Y'all are the first audience to ever say flash drive <laughs> uniformly. What is that about? <laughs> Who else said it? Because I've heard USB, I've heard memory stick. What is that? <laughs> USB key, right? Does anybody say uh, jump drive? There you go. What else have y'all heard it? Thumb drive. Thumb drive. Thumb drive. Thumb, really? A thumb drive. <laughs> That's what you call it, Nathan? That's what you Sneaker net. <laughs> Sneaker net. <laughs> so, I, seriously, memory stick is like the funniest one. Um, yes, flash drive, USB drunk drive. I mean, this thing's got crazy different names depending upon what territory, right? So, and, and I'm learning up here, it's not called a car, it is a car. <laughs> and you're not smart, you're wicked smart, right? So I'm trying. I'm trying to get there, y'all. So there, it depends on your demographic, right, of what things are called. And if you don't understand that, if all I did on my whole website was put on here USB flash drive, and I never optimized my website for, for potential other key terms, am I missing an audience? Yep. Am I perhaps missing sales? Oh, yeah. Probably, right? Now, Google's getting more intelligent when it comes to synonyms, so thankfully for that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll still gain some traffic, but there's still missed opportunities, definitely, if we don't understand who our audience is, what they're searching for, and uh, how they search. What devices are they searching on? Are they using the new voice command, which isn't really new anymore. That's showing my age, too. It's new to me. All right. So what keywords do they use? I'm going to give you a couple of tools right now to go help you find the keywords that you need to be using. So here you go. There's some that you're going to recognize. And I might have one extra in here that you might not have thought of just yet. So Keyword Planner, that's inside of Google. You do have to sign into your account, but it's free to use. So go use it. Uh, it's got some really cool demographics inside of it as well that will help you better understand an audience of who might be looking to purchase your services or purchase your product. Moz, how many of you already use Moz? Okay, a handful. It is a paid service, so sometimes we like to stay in the budget of free. So budget of free would be Google Trends. How many of you have ever used Google Trends? It's pretty slick, right? It's pretty great. And you can totally drill down to your demographic in your area. And you can do uh, search terms uh, that, that'll, uh, like variations. So let me, sh let me give you another example. I had a, um, let me be sure I'm okay on my time. I'm good. I had uh, a client who sold window treatments. Never in my life have I ever called it window treatments. I grew up in the South. We call everything blinds. Everything. I don't care if it's curtains. It's still blinds. It just doesn't matter. Who knew that people call them window coverings? I had no idea about that term. So we had to go, and she's got, she's got franchisees all over um, the U.S. and Canada. Of course, Canadians are different, eh? Do we have any? A few? No? Nobody? We can totally make fun. Oh, we got one. Got to be quiet. <laughs> so she's got Canadian uh, franchise owners who call the different products different things. And you have to be aware of, again, what your demographic is searching for. So super important to understand that. So are you location driven? That's another huge part of what your SEO strategy needs to be. If you are a location where people come to you, you must have your location in your page title. You must have your location down your page mixed in your content. I'm going to tell you why. If you think having, well, I have my address.
dress in the footer is good enough, you're ridiculous because it's one time and probably some of the smallest font possible on your website. Google doesn't pay attention to that, and it's one word out of what, you know, 300, 400, 700 that you have on your home page. It's one word. That's ridiculous. Help Google love you. So local SEO is definitely going to be key, and I'll get to that a little bit more in, in a second. Here we go. Here are some things I need you, if you want to, take a picture of this. But again, I'm going to give you all my slides um, and, and a link here at the end. These are the things I need you to go home and address with those keywords. So now you're going to go find your top 10 keywords. You know what you want to be ranking for. Now that you have those nuggets, now we know how to go add them into, which is optimizing, add them into our website, putting them in our page titles, putting them in the content. Uh, so this is saying our domain name and our permalinks. Please don't go buy a new domain name. You probably already have domain authority. You're probably doing good. But be sure your permalinks are set correctly, which are your links in your WordPress website. Words. Content is still king, right? So we have to be sure you have enough words on the page. Did you know that Google likes bullet points? They like, he likes it. It likes Google points because uh, we don't read. We want the cheat notes. We want the shortcuts. So we just bullet point things out. Google loves that. It wants to see you break out your content like that. So give them what they love. Give them some bullet points. They like things in bold because they know you're trying to draw attention to it. So maybe your keywords are in bold or maybe they're anchor text uh, that I have here. Anchor text just means that it's a linked word down your page. Where if you're saying something like, be sure to contact us today, maybe that word contact should be hyperlinked over to your contact page. Make it super simple for your users to navigate through your website. Be sure that your phone number is clickable. On your website these days, some phones are smart enough to pick up a phone number, some are not. Smartphones aren't that smart just yet. Header titles, all in there. Those are the things I need you to, and I've got to rush so that we have a little bit of a time to hang out here. So here's the slide I want you to check out for your local SEO. I want you to add your location in the page titles. Mention your location throughout the text. Say that we're the best in San Antonio, Texas, or wherever you're located. List that in there. Put in the Google Interactive Map. Google loves seeing itself. Why not? Put it in there. Um, get on Google Maps. Be sure that your listing is found on Google Maps. And I'm going to give you a resource to help you with those things. And claim your listing. Actually, that's the resource right there, Moz Local. How many of you ever use that? Super simple. Do a Google search for Moz Local. They're going to ask you to type in your domain name. And it's going to do a report across the World Wide Web of how your company is listed on different directories, different social networks. It's a really cool free, free is always in the budget, tool. All right, let's go a little advanced, y'all. You ready? Hold on your hats. I told you I to speak quickly. Google has to understand you, so let's go advanced. Who's using markup schema already? All right, it's like, what? I just got the last slide. I don't know what you're saying now. Um, it's okay. It's a, this is, for those of you that just looked at that last slide and said, holy crap, I've got a lot to do, let this just go right over your head. For those of you who are a little bit more advanced and feel like you've got those ducks in a row, let's pay attention for a second because I need you to do a couple of extra things. We want to be sure that you have in place. So markup schema is some of the newer stuff that Google's asking you, and it's not really that newer, it's a few years old, asking you to wrap around specific things in your website that help you stand out a little better. If you've seen Google rich snippets where you Google something, and it pops up in Google search results with like an address seen right there and maybe this, the uh, reviews listed right there in Google. Those are coming from rich snippets. It's extra HTML. That's all it is. Google's giving you extra cool tags that you can wrap around certain elements in your website that helps them better understand you. That's all we have to do is help them understand us a little bit more clearly. The robots text file. How many of you have ever worked with a client or had a situation where they're not ranking at all and they're frustrated and it's because that little tiny checkbox inside of your dashboard and your under reading says block all search engines. <laughs> How many of you have ever launched a website and six months down the road you're like, oh, did I leave that on? All right, this is one of the things you can go to Google and type in the, the Google search result. You're going to type in the word site. I'll show you this if we have time at the end. If not, come ask me if you want to learn how to do it. But you just type in the word S-I-T-E colon and put in your domain name without the dub dub dub. So mine would be webtegrity.com. 
and click enter and it's going to give you a full list of all the pages that Google has indexed on your website. That's absolutely something you need to do and of course accessibility, sitemap comes with Yoast and start building up your backlinks. I also want you to focus on your reviews and your reputation because if you, I, I went, I'm not going to throw the speaker under the bus today but I went to a, a really awesome chat and I went to their website listing and they don't have one Google review and I thought bummer man. I would have rather seen like 200 with like a 3.0 star, you know, rating than nothing. Content is still going to be king though. So here we go. So our users have to love us. So how do we do that? These are the things I want you to focus on for our users to fall in love with us. So the first thing, you're probably wondering why haven't I mentioned responsive yet. That's really more of a user experience. Even though Google wants us to have it, they want us to have it because it's a better user experience for our, our viewers, right? So we want it to work and navigate easily on any device possible and on any browser. We want it to load quickly, so you have to be sure that you're optimized. And what that means is you want to be sure that your images load quickly and that whatever videos you're using, they load quickly. I'm going to give you some tools to test your website to find out how you can improve those things. You have to have fresh original content because if you're putting out the same thing, if your website's growing cobwebs on it, how interesting is that for the next viewer to come back and bookmark you and come back and come back and come back again? Your, your, uh, your pie on the Google Analytics is going to be like 10% uh, 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 returning and like 90% brand new because nobody ever wants to come back to your website. And that's horrible. So a clear call to action is another big issue, probably one of the things we miss over and over and over again. I'll ask somebody, when somebody comes to your website, what do you want them to do? Well, they have to call me. Corey, if they'll call me, I'll land them every time. All right, well, where's your phone number? Well, it's about three pages deep. Here we go. You're going to click there. Oh, and then you got to go down there and click there. Put the phone number out there nice and big. Be sure that people understand what the call to action is. Are there ways to share your content? Are there ways to engage? Leaving a comment somewhere. Or watching a video. You have to be sure there are no broken links and no broken pages. I have a resource for you for that as well. And you also want it to feel very secure and trustworthy. So here's some of those monitoring tools. You might want to take a, a screenshot of this if you'd like. Uh, the, the, Tom uh, Shapiro also mentioned Hotjar, which is phenomenal. If we have a few extra seconds, I'll show you. What, anybody in here use Hotjar already? Oh, y'all, let's blow your minds with that. Okay, I'm going to show you what that looks like. As a matter of fact, I think that one's more important. I'll give you this one really quickly. I'm going to give you a bonus right here. You ready for this? This is going to be on my slides. Those of you that can say to me truthfully and honestly, Corey, I've got all that in place. I'm hoping to catch you with this one. All right? And this is one that you guys can go home and do right now. How many of you have one of these on your website or a website that you build for a client? It's our contact, right? It's a standard contact form. Or maybe you have something that looks like this, where it's contact us for a free consultation or a newsletter sign up. Most websites have this as at least a secondary call to action, right? Well, typically when they fill out one of those, what's typically the response that we have on the page after the fact? Right? Here's the problem with that. Somebody just gave you a very wonderful hot lead. And they are excited about what you do. And they are ready to engage with you. And you said, bye-bye, get out the door. There they go. You've not engaged with them yet again. You've missed a huge opportunity. What if you were to give them something like this? Hey, success. Thank you for contacting us. We should be able to contact you within 24 business hours. And be sure to check out our portfolio for examples of our design work. Or check, check us out on your favorite social network. Now we're keeping them retained and we're pointing them in the direction we want them to go. If your form rolls over or goes to a thank you page without any other option for them, you've missed an opportunity to keep them on your website and to keep that time clock running of how long they're staying on your website. What about giving them something like this? Thanks for shopping with us. Share us with your friends and get 10% off your next purchase. Again, not that empty blank page. So that's the link right there at the top. If you want to take a picture of that, WordCamp BOS is uh, the link on our website where you can go get all this stuff. I've got 15 plus resources there for you, as well as my slide deck, because I speak really quickly for a Southerner. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's kind of ridiculous, George. All right, let's do this. Any questions, y'all? Anybody? Five minutes, that's all we've got. 
Anybody? Anybody? Are your brains hurting? We good? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, y'all want to see it? Is that like the, the? Okay, let's do it. All right. Hot jar is crazy, wicked smart. All right. Also, in the realm of free, if you want an option, because hot jar is a premium product, you have to pay for it. They have a free trial, but ultimately you have to pay for it. There is a free option called Session Cams. And again, that link is put on that page I just gave you a link to. Um, but here's what's cool about this. I'm going to show you a website right here that we built out um, for a company. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. It's going to kill my internet. Why does it remember me? Let's see. It's not going to. Let me see if it'll allow me to, to watch one of these. Or it's going to kick my internet out. Yeah, it doesn't like my internet. So you've all seen uh, heat maps. I mean, that's, that's pretty standard. Even Google can give us stuff like that. But this is not going to allow me to, to view it because the... Uh, man, this was going to be such a cool way to end. Do they have a demo on YouTube? They might have a demo on YouTube. Uh, let's, let's see. Let's see if it'll take me over there. Uh, it's not liking me, I think, because it kicked me off the internet. Austin University! <laughs> um, well, long story short, all Hotjar is, is it actually records your user. So you're not guessing anymore. The, the thing I was going to show you is on, on, um, on this other site, we had an area up at the very top. I'll take you up here at the very top where, for instance, they had a phone number up here on the right side that we thought was obvious to click on to call. And right next to the phone number in a large font, we had an area that said 24-hour service uh, call today. And every, we never knew that everybody was clicking on that text instead of that phone number, expecting that text to be clickable when the phone number was right there. It's like, well, why aren't you clicking on the phone number? Everybody kept clicking on the 24-hour service tab. So be, and we never would have known that. Google can't even tell us that. We never would have known that had we not been watching and so Hotjar literally records your user's experience up and down the page. You get to see how they click on things, their logic. It's way Big Brother creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir? Is uh, Hotjar free? They do have a free trial period. Absolutely, yeah. It's really cool to check out. What else, y'all? Could you put your contact info back? Sure. Please? Let's throw that back up here, maybe. I say sure. No, but it's just all angry at me. My computer at this point is done, though. Its brain hurts. Okay. There you go. I have another question. Yes, let's do it. When you're, when you're filling out the Yoast and you pick out your keywords, is, does it, is it bad to have keywords that are the same word? Like, say, say one is blog and the other one is WordPress blog. Do those two keywords now compete against each other? So the question is, on the same page, let me, let me clarify with you, no, on the different pages. different pages. So she's asking, if, if we use a focus word inside of Yoast, maybe the word blog on one specific page, is it okay to have another page with the keyword WordPress blog? Am I understanding you? Yeah. Brilliant. So that's brilliant. Go do it. Absolutely go do that. Yes, no, variations. Well, so you're giving an opportunity. It's kind of like back to this. Right? It's back to this. It's a, just a variation. And if they're competing with each other, somebody's going to land on it. So it's okay. And then you watch your analytics of what page is ranking higher. And that's the one you give love to. Right? Yeah. Good question. Yes? How about number of pages? How about number of pages? So you, the, the typical 300-page uh, website is going to rank higher than a five-page website? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah? So I've seen five-page websites outrank 300-page websites all day long if they're optimized well enough. You just have to have a right strategy with it. Right. Now, if you, if you start your page with a lot of bullet points like, uh, like Google's looking for, yeah. and then you have a lot of text, does that help? Absolutely. Yeah, so all Google can read are alt tags, nerd code behind the scenes, and words. That's all it can read right now. So we've really got to be sure to have enough words in there to, to, to create that pattern that we were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. That allows Google to clearly understand what it is that we do. Yes? It used to be that you wanted all of your, you wanted the first page to be really long and have a lot sure. of good indexable text. But sure. now it looks like people are having sites that's just the picture and just links. So, so everybody hear that? So we're seeing the trendy, huge picture, huge typography, a couple of links, and we're trying to get people to click it. Why are we doing that? Anybody have logic behind why we do that as SEO people? 
Page clicks? Did I hear somebody say page clicks? Google tracks how many times people click in, right? So if they click their back button because they're not impressed or they can't connect with what we see right there, they click their back button and um, they're gone. Your bounce rate goes through the roof. So these, these uh, longer pages, we're hoping to engage people more and let them click on things and get to things and hopefully click into our site. It's interesting, though. Again, it's something that you would have to do A-B testing with. And y'all, I'm out of time. I can't believe y'all stuck it out with me. Way to go, y'all. Come talk to me.